Well, just about every single offseason, there is one team that's the focus of the trade period more than the others. And this year, early doors, it does appear to be the Essendon Football Club. Now, the reason for that being the case is, on top of their outgoing coach, John Warsfold, being replaced by Ben Rutten, and a couple of retirements to guys like Connor McKenna and Tom Bellchambers, there seems to be a bit of an exodus building at that footy club. Key players like Adam Saad, Joe Danaher, and then rumours of Orazio Fantasia and Devin Smith also wanting to leave. All of these potential moves in conjunction do kind of indicate to the broader community that there might be a little bit of a cultural issue at that footy club. The media reaction generally has been focused around the idea that Essendon need to revamp their culture and potentially even rebuild their entire list. Now in terms of an actual rebuild, personally I think a list rebuild is an overused term. Essendon definitely do not need to revamp their entire list. A lot of their talent is still pretty young and a lot of their heavy lifters are on the right side of about 27 or 28. In particular, they have some pretty close to elite talent in guys like Andrew McGrath, 22, Zach Merritt's one of their best players and he's 25 I believe and then of course their best and fairest from this year Jordan Ridley is also 22 years old. Now like a lot of middle of the road clubs they could certainly use an injection of talent but they're still pretty much halfway through their last bloody rebuild. But this potential exodus does raise some glaring concerns for the footy club. For me the glaring one is Adam Saad who's requested a trade home to Victoria just three years ago from the Gold Coast Suns. He's joined Essendon and he's finished top three in their best and fairest. I think he's about 25 or 26 years old and he wants to leave after after just three seasons. On top of that, you've got Joe Danaher, who's even more widely talked about. They sat in limbo with him after refusing to trade him 12 months ago. It didn't get too much out of him this year. There's been talk that he's been frustrated with a medical team or whatever. I'm not too sure how true that actually is. But either way, it's another guy who's wanted to get out of there for a little while now too. Orazio Fantasia is another player who's wanted to go home for a couple of years now despite having a contract. Connor McKenna's just randomly retired. And now Sam Edmonds is also reporting that Devin Smith is exploring his options despite being contracted. Now to what extent I'm not too sure but it does seem kind of undeniable that there's some sort of cultural issue here to what extent I'm not too sure. Now for me I'm not going to assert that there's some sort of toxic environment and all the players hate each other or anything like that but what does appear evident is that the players aren't really sold on one vision at the moment. A good example of that is Adam Saad preferring to play for Carlton. Evidently he just sees the vision of their future a little bit better than Essendon's. So in this video I don't want to rag on Essendon for these perceived cultural issues. What can they actually do about it? Well first things first they need to get the cultural aspect of the club right. It's all well and good attracting talent, but if you can't nurture it or even keep it, there's no real point. Something internal does need to click at that footy club and the new coach in Rutten really needs to drive the standards and sell the vision to the players. What they may need to do is identify which players are causing any kind of rift internally. There's been talk about Devin Smith. I have absolutely no idea if that's actually true, but that might be a path worth considering. If there are players that are disruptive to the rest of the playing group, maybe they should be moved on. The other thing that David King raised, which I think is a really good point. If there are concerns about the perceived playing culture at that footy club, you do need to look at their guys in their prime, these senior players, which Adam Saad, Joe Danaher, Orazio Fantasia are all examples of. These are the guys that drive the culture of the club, so there's no good for them to sit back and say, hey, I don't want to play here anymore because this is not a great environment. Now, I have no idea what's actually happening internally at the footy club. I just thought that was a really good point by David King. Perhaps the vision being sold at that footy club isn't quite clear, and I did raise the issue 12 months ago. I was a little concerned around how a succession plan would actually look. Perhaps things didn't go so smoothly in terms of the transition from Worsfold to Rutten. It did seem like Worsfold seemed a little bit bitter towards the end of that reign. Essendon fans may be able to give better insight on that than myself. But what should be reassuring for Bombers fans is that even if there is an issue around culture, we've seen plenty of examples of clubs turning it around very, very quickly under a new coach. Best example of that is Chris Fagan, who took Brisbane from virtually Gold Coast levels of shit a few years ago to, you know, absolute juggernauts at the moment. And that was driven largely through culture. Obviously, yes, they did have access to a lot of draft picks, but tons of clubs do have access to draft picks as well, and they don't quite get the same results that Fagan has. But let's look at the potential players leaving and what deals Essendon could actually extract from them. We'll start with Danaher. He's a restricted free agent, which means that they can actually match any offer to Brisbane for him and force a trade. If they don't match, it's likely they'll get banned to compensation, which at this stage is probably going to be around pick 20, if I'm not mistaken. What could be a better option is forcing a trade by matching accepting a first round draft pick for him which is going to be a couple of picks better than him and potentially a fringe player like Alex Witherden who's played just six games 
due to such a congested Brisbane Lions team. It's so competitive for spots in that team. He's a talented young Victorian. I'd probably be pushing down this path. The value of Joe Danaher is really hard to assess because he's super talented, he's contracted, and he could really be anything if he gets his form and fitness right. On the flip side of that, he has been so injury plagued that in the last three seasons, he's only played 15 games and hasn't really fired a shot. Certainly you can see why now Essendon are gonna get nowhere near a good a deal as what Sydney were offering 12 months ago. As for Adam Sartre, Carlton, they currently hold pick seven in the draft. Personally, I think that would be crazy to give that up, but what they might do is split pick seven for two picks in the mid to late teens and give one of them to Essendon as well. So another first round is potentially there. Orazio Fantasia and Devon Smith are a bit harder to assess. They're both really good players on their day, but haven't really done much for a couple of years now, and they're both contracted as well. They need to make an assessment about whether keeping these particular players to their contracts would be good or bad for their culture. Like I said, if Smith really is a disruptive character, and I have absolutely no idea, maybe they should consider letting him go. Additionally, if they're convinced that Marazio is just gonna leave in 12 months to a South Australian club, they might as well try and get a little bit for him now versus potentially nothing in 12 months time. But flowing on from the first two hypothetical trades, Essendon would enter this draft with three top 20 picks, and we can see how quickly clubs can turn it around with three top 20 picks, the best example being Port Adelaide in 2018, where they took Rosie, Dersma, and Butters, who are all already key players for that club. Port were a tired old list who lacked outside speed, and in three hits in that draft, more or less regenerated their list with three supreme talents. Now, Essendon could use a similar injection of enthusiasm. The only problem with this strategy is that it relies on you absolutely nailing your three picks, which is literally what every club tries to do in every single draft ever. Like I alluded to though, Essendon's list is actually pretty decent. You compare it to sides in the past who have had recent exoduses. Exoduses? Exodi. Exod multiple exoduses. I'm thinking Fremantle a few years ago when you had like Langdon and Hill and Neil leave and then Adelaide obviously in recent years. Those clubs weren't equipped with the same talent around as what Essendon have right now. I think this could be a good time to hit the draft for the Bombers, take those three picks inside the top 20, but I would also be looking at some potential money ball picks to supplement that talent, particularly some good characters as well. Now I've talked about potentially getting Witherden as part of the Danaher deal. It does look like Essendon have also nudged ahead in the race for Jai Caldwell from GWS, which I think would be a great move. And then there's guys like Will Brody and Xavier O'Halloran, which I've talked about in a previous video, who could be on the move for cheap. Now there may be some cheaper options to replace Danaher in this trade period as well. There's a few key forwards on the move. We've talked about Tom McDonald and potentially Ben Brown joining the club. For me, I still think Ben Brown has plenty to offer, as does Tom McDonald. So for a discount, these guys might not be the worst options as replacements. And to be honest, I don't see any real reason why Essendon shouldn't be in the market for a Brad Crouch although it may be that he's more interested in clubs like Geelong and Richmond who are undoubtedly in the race for him. Overall, this is a really pivotal time for this Essendon footy club and it's a great challenge for Ben Rutten to walk into to try and navigate his club out of. And when I say great, I mean probably shit, but it could be the making of him. <laughs> he's got to make the culture his focus, he's got to drive high standards and ultimately try and bring this club back to what it was. He's got to sell a strong vision and he's got to populate the list with players that actually want to be at that footy club, much like Jurgen Klopp for my beloved Liverpool Football Club. Anyway guys, as anyway guys, as always, I welcome your opinions in the comment section. What do you think Essendon should do this offseason to try and navigate out of what is potentially a very tricky situation? Make sure you subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.